You're watching Murnahan on Sky News. The top stories this morning. The armed forces in Chad say the Al-Qaeda commander who led the deadly assault on a gas plant in Algeria has been killed. Mokhtar Belmokhtar is reported to have died in northern Mali. Syria's President Bashar al-Assad has accused the British government of bullying in its approach to the conflict in his country. And the Prime Minister David Cameron insists that he won't lurch to the right after his party was beaten into third place by UKIP in the Eastleigh by-election. I'm sure a lot of those stories will arise in our paper review now. I'm joined by the Labour MP and Shadow Public Health Minister Diane Abbott, by the crossbench peer and Chief Executive of Turning Point, Lord Adabawali, and by the EU's humanitarian ambassador, who also happens to be an international supermodel, Tasha de Vasconcelos. Very good morning to you all, and uh, Tasha, we ended up on you, so we'll start with you. And you've got this, uh, as I was mentioning in the headlines there, this uh, a sad interview where, uh, well, he rather lays into Britain's role in the conflict. Yes, good morning. good morning. And lovely to be with you. Thanks. Good morning. Um, it's very, um, it, we must be very constantly vigilant of, of this, and it's very saddening to see what he's saying. I think it's pretty obvious that we need good role models today, um, more than ever in our world. Clearly, leadership is a very important thing that um, people need to look on, and I think his, his message is, um, is not. Um, very, very positive, and I think we must be clearly. Uh, it saddens me very much uh, the people that are dying in this conflict, and the children, and and the civilians that have been um, their lives have been destroyed in in this terrible mm. war. I, I mean, you know, it, he's in a long line of leaders in this position, isn't he, to bring in Lord Adebowale and, and Diane here? You know, he's delusional, isn't he? I mean, yeah, he's he's you read through what, yeah, what he says is going on there, isn't what everyone else? And the offer of talks. Sorry. The offer of talks is a non-offer. I mean, he's, you know, and for him to talk about bullying when he's killed and murdered so many of his own people, mm -hmm. he is in that kind of bunker state yeah. where he's completely deluded. And the criticism of Europe and America is not that they've done too much. Some people criticise them for not doing enough. Well, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, you know, we, we, we parallels with Gaddafi, certainly, yeah. I mean, and, and many he, before yeah, him. Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is the man's in a bubble, literally in a bunker. Yeah. He will get his news from people who tell him what he wants to hear. And um, he is, I mean, he is delusional. I mean, clear but there is, a, 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 I mean, there is a thorny problem in terms of, you know, he, he says Britain has been bullying, but it's, you but know, in, in Britain, we're, we're thinking exactly the point. You, what more can we do? But the United Kingdom is a champion of human rights. We, have, uh, we are, um, so. I speak also yeah. very much supporting, um, um, in England has supported human rights and been a leading example in the world for that and fought very much on that for many, many years. Mm. So it is not coherent what he is saying. Yeah, and um, it saddens me that such leaders are in our world today and we need more great role models, do we not? Yes, indeed. Well, uh, hopefully not in our world for, <laughs> for, for yes. much too longer, I think, is the message that's coming back from the UK to, yes. to President Assad. Uh, Dan, I want to bring in, uh, we've got to, got to talk about this. We've just been talking about it for the first uh, half of this uh, hour the defeats, particularly for the uh, Conservatives in the Eastleigh by-election, and you've uh, picked up on the words, actually, of, uh, of the Prime Minister and, indeed, a Tory backbencher. Well, it's quite an interesting analogy, you know, an analogue yeah. party in, uh, in an internet world. But, I mean, the Tories are in meltdown post Eastley and it's all good clean fun for those of us who aren't Tories and just a shout out to the good voters of Eastley I wish more of them had voted Labour but they did manage to vote ignoring all the Renard allegations which were floating around now what Lord Renard is alleged to have done is clearly despicable but I think the good voters of Eastley understood that it's not a problem isolated to the Liberal Democrats and they deserve a bit of credit for that. Okay I mean just on the Renard thing I mean do you hope there's nothing like that in your party and if there were that it would be investigated swiftly and properly? Well I'd like to think that those sorts of allegations would be invested, uh, investigated swiftly in any party but my point is that that sort of behaviour is not about one particular party, it's, it's about politics at our level. Okay, let's get I mean, back to Eastley. I mean, Victor, what, what did you make of it all? Well, I mean, that huge UKIP vote, is that just a protest vote um, or is that a sign of the way you people know, are thinking? I, I doubt if we know, really. I mean, um, it, we've got two years to an election. Um, the country is clearly still suffering from a terrible recession. Um, there is a lurch to the right in, in the country, which the UKIP have, have picked up on. Um, I, I'm quite concerned about some of the things that, that UKIP 
say, I have to say, I mean, uh, some, of the, some of the rhetoric on immigration, I think, is worrying yeah. in terms of the language that's used. Um, I don't think there'll be a lurch to the right. I think there'll be a slow walk uh, over the next two years um, in that direction. Um, and I just hope that we can move to the to the issues that really matter, you know, poverty, yeah. uh, the economy. I think, well, which, 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 I think you know, which Diane's party is making, but, you know, yeah. I was talking about it with Sadiq Khan, yeah. I don't want to go over the ground again, I'm sure you're going to say the same thing, but you've got no traction there whatsoever, you had no appeal, yeah, Sabre, you, we were were you were never we going, were going to win the seat, I know you're going to, to say that, East but East. you want to be the party of government next time, yeah, and you, know, you finished you, fourth. You know, the danger of Eastleigh for us is that it'll drag us to the right on issues like immigration. That's my view. There is no route to power in 2015 for the Labour Party in the thickets of an anti-immigration narrative. I think we have to, it's a difficult issue, and there was a lot of talk about it on the doorstep, but the Labour Party has to hold the line on immigration, because if we don't, nobody will. Hold the line on immigration, I mean, Tash, you know, we're, we're, we're discussing throughout the course of this programme today, and actually, that, you know, that seems to have been one of the big issues thrown up by Eastleigh, and of course we've got this loop date of 1st of January 2014 when uh, anyone who wants to come here from Romania or Bulgaria will be allowed to because they're members of the EU and so are we. Yes, um, difficult times um, ahead definitely in um, immigration and all these issues. I think that the support of, um, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to, to the worst, I think that's the point. It's the the economic recession that has brought all these things in a. It's it's yeah. a much more difficult time if you look at Portugal, if you look at um, Spain, if you look at uh, France, if you look at. England, if you, uh, it is a difficult time in the, the world. Tasha is, you, no, Tasha just, is right. Whenever yeah. you have a recession, look at Germany in the 30s. Mm. You had a huge rise in anti-Semitism. Mm. We're going through a Europe-wide recession. People are frightened of immigrants. Exactly. It's an economic phenomenon. And it seems to be weirdly else. focused. I mean, I was just wondering if the horse meat thing, you know, with the Romanian yeah. abattoirs got involved. Oh. It's Romanians <laughs> and Bulgarians. Well, because you know, I was reading, mm. there's a lot of Greek people coming think, here because of their problems. Yeah. A lot of I Italians think, and think, Spanish. We don't seem to be going I on think, about them. I think, I think, well, I think I think that's a very good point and I think the issue really is about the politics of simplicity. It's very simple for politicians to say well you know eight million people are going to come over from Bulgaria. There are eight million people <laughs> in that country actually, there are six yeah. and most of them aren't going to come anywhere near this but country. Most of all, and I I'd think say it's about being, being honest yeah. and telling people the facts and, and actually not stoking the fears that, okay. that, that Diana has talked about. And yeah, perhaps okay, respecting one just one, to, sorry to interrupt, but just respecting the cultures of each country in the, in, you know, the culture of England and this is terribly important to respect the Maybe country not. as it is. So You've if you come here, you must respect England. Yeah, well, one part, I'm going to move on to one, uh, perhaps, um, let's say, less savoury part of our culture, <laughs> which uh, Victor has picked up on boozing culture. Yeah. Perhaps, they, perhaps they can leave that one out. Yeah. And David Davis is uh, David an interesting article in the, in the Sun. In the, in the, yeah, in, in the Sun. I mean, it's a, I, first of all, I mean, uh, my organisation, Turning Point, probably 10 years ago was, was uh, making it clear that we were 13 people a day were dying as a result of, of alcohol. Um, 11, um, you're looking about one in 11 children go to our schools, parents that are drinking too much. This is a story that's run and run and run for years, and we don't seem to be able to grasp it. I think the story is interesting. I don't agree, by the way, with, with well, David Davis. Against, yeah, against minimum yeah, pricing. I mean, you know, the minimum pricing argument isn't just something that was dreamt up. This has been researched by some of the most eminent experts in psychopharmacology, in substance misuse. You know, this has been tried in many countries countries and has proven to work um, and while his point is that you know why punish people who drink sensibly yeah, the well point but that is I mean that's a very well, strong no, the case point, why no, people, no, people, no, people the, who the are case, on look, it is labor, why can't they have a glass of wine the not, labor, not but, of no, but it's, we're not talking about people not drinking a glass of wine we're talking about people we're talking about young people that go to an off license yeah. on a Friday and get four litre bottles of cheap extra strength cider uh, uh, and the point about minimum pricing it'll have a particular effect on problem drinkers and young drinkers, the and they are the people suffering from the health ill effects. So, there's one form it's of cancer going up at the present time, and that's liver cancer, liver and that's cancer, due to it's alcohol. Cancer, it's, it's the, it's the, so it's it's the expenditure in the energy. Yeah. So, it is, it, is, it is about raising the issue, but it's about taking it seriously and not using it as a political football. Okay. The fact of the so matter is. So, you agree is with David works. Davis, but you disagree it's about evidence, minimum I agree pricing. with the fact that he's raised the story, disagree with okay. the. Okay, I want to bring in some uh, more stories, and they're all linking together here because we're talking about about the huge cost to society economic costs of course a lot of it felt by the NHS and you've got a mm. Tasha you've got this about whistleblowers you know being encouraged by the government to internal whistleblowers to to do it and we're now hearing from people who who would be whistleblowers why they don't blow that whistle yes 
um, it breaks my heart to see um, the sadness. It saddens me so much that the fragile need so much support and, and they need a voice and so this is important to put this into the light. It's um, very important that um, the, 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 they don't, a lot of them don't have the financial possibilities to, to, to support themselves and I think we must, uh, the, the NHS needs to stand strong mm. um, and be responsible because the, the the poor and the um, fragile need us. Yeah, I mean, uh, but a lot of it happened, you know, talking about Stafford and other things, happened on Labour's watch. Why have people who work within the NHS, who could be really crucial in getting to the bottom of where things are going wrong, why do they still feel that they can't speak out, Diane? Well, it's very difficult if you're part of an institution to speak out against that institution. I'm yeah. sure it would be the case with Sky. And I think one of the interesting things about this what? story, it's about a private... Well, I'm sure it would be the what? case. Um, it's, 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 just, it's, it's the nature of institutional cultures. That you want to be part of the institution. You want to try and be loyal. And also you worry about your job prospects if you're seen to have criticised that institution. But this is actually about a private out-of-hours health centre. And we're going to see more of the private sector under this government's reorganisation and I think we're going to see more problems not less. Okay and bring in uh, the story you've picked out from uh, front page of the Times isn't it leading on this on the clampdown on NHS care for migrants do you think it's possible do you think it should be done if it is possible? I don't defend health tourism people coming here to get expensive health treatment but it's much trickier to do than the government appears to think doctors and GPs do not want to act as immigration officers and ask people for their passports mm. when they rock up to get treatment so it is it is going yeah, to be but, I mean, those of us who are used to travelling, you know, in, in the European Union, even if you go into France, you know, they want your credit card or they want your insurance policy. I don't defend health tourism. But the other thing, point I would make is this: that if you, if you in introduce this kind of system where immigrants and illegal immigrants can't get health care, clearly they'll keep away from. <laughs> health care authorities and then what you'll see is a rise in population level diseases like TB so you may save money on the treatment you don't give them Interesting but, but you'll see higher levels of disease. Okay Victor very last story from you just really quickly we've got time to squeeze it in health map of shame well, I, think. I, I mean, I think it, sp it speaks to the to the points that have been made by by Tasha yeah. and Diana. Clearly, what 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 the current position of the NHS um, says, particularly after mid staffs, it, is that we need more openness about the conditions in which people um, get the health care. We need more openness from the NHS. I, I think, as a member of the commissioning board, one of the things that I'm absolutely focused on is reversing the inverse care law, which is absolutely about transparency. People should know about the quality of their GPs, the quality of their hospitals but what we should avoid is when these stories rush out what we get is the press chasing the fox the problem is the problems back at the mansion so we just we just need to be clear and it's a bit like the immigration story you know, simplicity can be dangerous what we find is that actually many of these stories are far more complicated and, 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 and just to review. say dignity and self-esteem are the core of, of humanity so Absolutely we need to right. really protect that and Absolutely. so uh, we need to speak when and so those things are important to be brought to light here here well, thank you for bringing yeah, them yeah. to light Tasha Devaskin, that was Lord Admiral Wiley Diane Abbott very good to see you all thank you very much indeed for taking us through the Sunday papers and you're watching Mona